Good afternoon. This video is in regards to how do we trade with the different time frames? How does that help us make decisions? And why do we deal with different time frames? The example we're going to use is August crude on July 18th. I want to show you something on how we use our different time frames and how it can be a profitable scenario for you. So this is it. Earlier this morning, we see the crude sell off a little bit and then start to retrace. You can see that this low here was 95.96. This is actually about a dollar off its highs. And then it tries to retrace, and it looks like we got a change pattern. See the increase in green, taking bar highs out. But this point here, you see where this market stopped right here? The price is this 96.64. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that. Remember that 96.64. At the time when we were trading this off our 30 minute chart, that's this high right here. You notice this is my short term moving average on my 30 minute chart. We're in sales obviously because my short term mover is below my middle Bollinger. That puts us in, we're looking for sales on rallies. We want to make decisions as close as we can to um, the moving averages. So this is early in the morning. This is 2.30 in the morning. You can see my middle Bollinger. And while we're still in sales, we get these scenarios. So here's one at 8.30 Chicago time. At the time, this is right on the mark. But this high here, the moving average was at 96.64. So you take that information, you go to our short-term chart where we make most of our decisions on to put the trade and how do we risk the trade. Okay. This is the 64 high right here. Five minutes in sales. Okay, so we're actually looking for sales as it comes up and what could be retracement or not retracement. Okay, so my five minutes in sales, my 30 minutes in sales. So I have two time frames with the same bias. Okay, so then we get this scenario. Okay, it, it trades it and actually trades it on sort of decreasing volume, which is either not good or bad. doesn't really... But the, the idea is that it stopped at my longer term resistance off my 30 minute chart. And then we get into a pennant. You see this blue triangle? This is an inside bar of this bar that's important to us, this high. A couple of things you can do. You can sell against this bar, okay? Because we know if we're wrong, you're just going to lose this little bit. Or the worst case scenario is wait for a volume setup pattern this decreasing volume as we get to this level. But you notice the pennants. The pennants are important. When you have a pennant, it means the market's unsure. It has an inside bar. The market's unsure. So we wait for the market to tell us what to do. That's why if you did sell it against the 64, it's obviously you'd be feeling good about yourself because we took out our bar low coming out of that pennant. We didn't do it on increasing volume. So we're still a little bit leery if we haven't seen the big push yet. And then we get this doji here on very decreasing volume, also coming out of a pennant. So this bar is inside of this bar. Okay, pennants are very important to here at Mount Market Research trading the Nautilus trading system. So once we get through this and we take this bar out low with increasing volume, that is our worst case scenario, but it is one of our triggers. So on this bar, this decreasing volume, if we take out that low with increasing volume, that's our trigger, and we risk this bar, okay? Selling 96.23s, if it trades 96.36, we get stopped out, and we lose $120 on a one lot. But if we're right, it gets us back with our longer-term trends and what we're trying to do, okay? Same scenario here. You see this decreasing, increasing scenario? This is a possible add, or if you're in this position here, you're hanging through this. You love to see this more continuation down patterns. We got this signal because we knew that this high here was my 30 minute middle of short term moving average. It stopped there. Now it's coming out of a pennant. We've got a doji, which is the bulls and the bears fighting. And then once we took out this low of this pennant with increasing volume, that was our target. And you can obviously see where it takes us. Again, that's the five minute. Remember that 96.23. So you go to your longer term chart, and you can obviously see this is the market, and we keep making new lows on that scenario. We go to our two hour chart, okay, to look for areas to get out of, 
okay? And one of the areas that we got out of was right here. This is the 9512 level. This is a bottom Bollinger on a 2-hour chart. And with the Nautilus trading system, this isn't a long position, but this tells us this is an area that we need to take profit. Remember that 9623, 9512? That's about $1,100 with $120 risk. That is how we use our different time frames. Once again, we knew we had a resistance on my 30-minute chart. It showed up on your 5-minute chart. That gave us the signal coming out of a pennant, which we like. This decreasing, increasing red gets us back in with the trend. If we're wrong, we lose this bar. If we're right, we're risking 130 to possibly make 1100. And in this case scenario, it worked out good. So you can see how the 30 minute got us a position. You see how the two hour gave us an exit strategy, bottom Bollinger. Yeah, it did go lower. It went about, you know, maybe another 30 cents lower, 40 cents lower. But for us, that was good enough. Good risk reward. You can see how we use all of our time frames to give us a position. That is why we use three different time frames on all of our charts.